So now let's start. Income taxes under IAS 12. Can I please say that? Can I please say that? Income tax, income tax refers to income tax refers to both domestic and foreign taxes, both domestic and foreign taxes, both domestic and foreign taxes for the year, for the year based on the taxable profit, based on the taxable profit, based on the taxable profit, based on the taxable profit. Good. Terminologies. Terminologies, number one, taxable profit. Taxable profit. Let me see that. This is the profit for the period. This is the profit for the period. This is the profit for the period. This is a profit for the period. Determined, determined using revenue authority assumptions. This is the profit for the period. Determined using revenue authority assumptions. Revenue authority assumptions. Number two, accounting profit. Accounting profit. Accounting profit. Let you see that. Is the profit for the period? Is the profit for the period determined? Is the profit for the period determined using accounting principles and assumptions? Is the profit for the period determined using? Is the profit for the period determined using accounting principles and assumptions? Accounting principles and assumptions, accounting principles and assumptions, accounting principles and assumptions. Number three, deferred tax, deferred tax, deferred tax, you see that? Is the tax payable or recoverable in the future? Is the tax payable or recoverable in the future? Is the tax payable or recoverable in the future? Which arises, which arises as a result of, which arises as, as, as a result of temporary differences? Temporary differences. You see that is the tax payable or recoverable in the future? which arises as a result of temporary differences. Let's define temporary differences. That's terminology number four, temporary differences. Temporary differences. You see that? This is the difference between, this is the difference between, this is the difference between temporary differences. This is the difference between the current amount, the difference between the current amount and the tax base of an item and the tax base of an item is the difference between the current amount and the tax base of an item. Now that's the temporary difference. Let's define current amount. We define current amount. We define current amount. What's current amount? Current amount means then it's like net book value, the amount shown in the financial statement. Right? You see that? This is the amount of an item. This is the amount of an item. This is the amount of an item shown in the financial statement. Shown in the financial statement. This is the amount of an item shown in the financial statement. Let's define tax base. Tax base. Tax base. Tax base. Have you see that? 
This is the amount allowable for tax purposes in the future. This is the amount of an item. This is the amount of an item. This is the amount of an item allowable for tax purposes in the future. This is the amount of an item. This is the amount of an item allowable for tax purposes, allowable for tax purposes in the future, allowable for tax purposes in the future. Good. Now let's look at types of temporary differences, types of temporary differences, types of temporary differences. Let you see that. There are two types of TD. There are two types of TD. Yeah, TD means temporary differences. There are two types of TDs, temporary differences. A, A, taxable temporary differences. Taxable temporary differences. Taxable temporary differences. Then you explain, you see that? This is the TD, this is the TD. This is the TD or temporary differences. This is the TD or temporary differences, which gives rise, which gives rise to deferred tax liability, which gives rise to, which gives rise to deferred tax liability, which gives rise to deferred tax liability. Number B, deductible temporary. Differences, deductible temporary differences. Let me see that. This is the TD. This is the TD. This is the TD or temporary difference, which gives rise, which gives rise, which gives rise, which gives rise to deferred tax asset, which gives rise to a deferred tax asset, which gives rise to deferred tax asset. Good. Terminology number seven. Let's define deferred tax liability. Deferred tax liability. Deferred tax liability. Let me see that. This is the amount of tax payable in the future. This is the amount of tax. This is the amount of tax. This is the amount of tax. Payable in the future, payable in the future, which arises as a result of, which arises as a result of, which arises as a result of taxable temporary differences, which arises as a result of taxable temporary differences. I repeat again, I see that this is the tax or the amount of tax payable in the future which arises as a result of taxable temporary differences. Number eight, number eight, a deferred tax asset. Deferred tax asset. So what's a deferred tax asset? It can either be an asset, it can either be a liability. So what's a deferred tax asset? See that? This is the amount of tax recoverable in the future. This is the amount of tax recoverable in the future, recoverable in the future, recoverable in the future, which arises, which arises as a result of, which arises as a result of deductible temporary differences, which arises as a result of, which arises as a result of deductible temporary differences, deductible temporary differences. Good. Yeah, so that's all about the concept of deferred tax. Now let's go back to the definition. Or before you go to the definition, let's write something, write something. Another paragraph, another paragraph. See that? Tax expense for the period, tax expense for the period, tax expense for the period is made up of two elements. Tax expense for the period, it's made up of two elements. It's made up of two elements. 
semicolon a a current tax current tax we explain we like to see that we explain to see that this is the tax for the period this is the tax for the period this is the tax for the period based on the taxable profit for the year this is the tax for the period based on the taxable profit for the year ie 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 revenue minus expenses revenue minus expenses if you take all the income you raise the expenses what you get as a profit before tax, then you tax. Now that tax is what we call the current tax. B, B, deferred tax. We have said that the tax expense for the year is made up of two elements. One is the current tax. B is the deferred tax. B is the deferred tax. You ready to say that? <clears throat> this considers, this considers the changes in deferred tax. 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 NB, 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 number one. Increase in deferred tax liability, increase in deferred tax liability, increase in deferred tax liability, is an expense increase in deferred tax liability is an expense where a reduction is an income 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 so you're saying that increase in deferred tax liability you see a liability whenever a liability increases how does that affect the income statement it becomes an expense whenever a liability reduces how does it affect the income statement? It becomes a what? An income. Good. NB number two. NB number two. <clears throat> Revaluation changes. Revaluation changes for PPE. Revaluation changes for PPE. Now that's the plant property and equipment. And available for sale financial asset. And available for sale. Available for sale financial asset has a special deferred tax treatment, has a special deferred tax treatment, has a special deferred tax treatment, has a special deferred tax treatment. Now, let's be here. Now, you're saying that the tax expense for the year is made up of two elements. One is the current tax, the other one is deferred tax. In that, you're saying that the current, I mean, the tax expense, the one to be shown in the statement of comprehensive income, it's made up of two elements. One, the thing is the current tax, and this is a tax for the year based on the taxable profit for the year. And then you factor in the changes in deferred tax, of which we have said that an increase in deferred tax becomes an expense. Therefore, it will increase the tax expense. A reduction in deferred tax liability becomes an income, therefore reducing the tax expense. You can show that. Good. So now let me explain the whole concept of deferred tax. So we are saying that deferred tax is the amount of tax either payable or recoverable in the future, which arises as a result of what? Can you go back to the definition? Which arises as a result of temporary differences. Good. Now, what are temporary differences? Now let's go back to the definition. What are temporary differences? 
is the difference between the, the carrying amount and the tax base, of which we are saying that the carrying amount is the same as net book value or the amount shown in the financial statement. Who prepares the financial statement? The accountants, are you together? Good. You're saying that temporary difference is the difference between the carrying amount and the tax base. What's tax base? Go back to the definition. Is the amount arable for tax purposes in the future or what we call the amount attributable for tax purposes? How do you determine the tax? For those who have done taxation, you know, we have what we call arable and disarable expenses, right? For income, we have taxable income and untaxable income. When it comes to an accountant, it's all about incomes and exp expenses. To the taxman, it's all about arable income, uh, sorry, yeah, taxable income and arable expenses. Now, the difference now between the accountant perspective and the revenue authority perspective is what gives rise to temporary what? Differences. How does it arise? So, carrying amount, you're saying that this is you now, the accountant. You are the one preparing the financial statement. Then the tax base, this is the tax man. That's the clear, right? The perspective between now the accountant and the tax man is what we give to temporary what? Differences. What does it mean? You bought a machinery. The company bought a machinery at a cost of 10 million. Then during the financial year, the depreciation charge was 2 million. During the same financial year, the wear and tear, you know what you call wear and tear? Wear and tear of the capital allowance. Eh? Wear and tear for the period was 3 million. I repeat again. The company purchased machinery worth 10 million. And then at the end of the financial year, the position charge for the year was 2 million. And the wear and tear was 3 million. Now you're preparing the financial statement. You want to determine the provision for the deferred tax. So here we have machinery. Let's start with you. You are the accountant. How much will be the net book value or the carrying amount, the amount to be shown in the financial statement? Now I want individual answers, eh? not chorus. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with the woman left. Eh? 5,000. Ruton? Five. Five. Uh -huh. You are Lydian, eh? Lydian, you get? Eight, is it Anne? Anne, you get five. Ah, yeah. let me go to the other side. Eh? At the back, the brown lady. What's your name? Pay uh -huh. five. Eh, ah, yeah. cross them. Uh -huh. Eight thousand. Mm -hmm. Posia. Who is for the other? You two. You are the one, eh? Uh -huh. 11,000. Uh -huh. Ida Onyango. 5,000. Where do I know? Uh -huh. Margaret. 8,000. Uh -huh. uh -huh. 5,000. 5,000, 8,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. What about this team? Okay. Sorry? Eight, eh? Eight, eh? Five, eight, uh -huh. Now I have three answers. Five, eight, there was a little 11 somewhere eh? from Fozea. Uh -huh. Sorry? Eight. Eh? Ah, yeah. Now let's see. That's why I said that I want individual answers, not what? Chorus. Now, what I've asked was it the carrying amount of the tax base? Carrying amount. Carrying amount is the same as what? In Lehman's language, net book value. How do you get the net book value? Cost minus depreciation. So you, as an accountant, you'll take the cost, of which the cost was how much? 10, or you don't know about the way it is. You know depreciation as per the company policy, which is the amount of what? 2,000. So the carrying amount would be how much? 
Now let's go to the tax man. Now to the tax man, uh, depreciation is a desirable expense. Why? Because this is what happens. Eh? You might have a bus. She has a bus. We have a bus. Depending on how you use it, eh? depreciation rate for um, all the company are totally di different. So for the revenue, they to standardize. So that's why they came up with a standardized value. If you have a car or maybe a machinery or an asset to this class, they have the same rate, which is standard. So for them, they'll not recognize depreciation. Recognize what? When? So for the taxman now, you'll take the 10 million. That's not considered depreciation. We consider what? When? So 10 minus three, you get how much? You see, they are totally different. Eh? The difference now between the accountant perspective and the taxman perspective is what gives rise to divide what? Tax. So eight minus seven, there's a difference of how much? One. And if you get a positive, that's what you call a taxable temporary difference. If you get a negative, that's what you call a deductible temporary difference. Now let's take another scenario. The company bought land worth 10 million at the beginning of the financial year. So now you are the accountant presenting the financial statement at the end of the year. But at the end of the year, remember that do appreciate, right? In value. So assume now the fair value. What is fair value? Fair value is the current value of the market, huh? market value. No, the market value at the end of the year of the reporting date. Eh? Now assume it's an amount of 13 million. Good. Now you are the accountant, chief accountant, not just an accountant, chief accountant. Eh? That means you are CPK. How much will you recognize to the financial statement as the current amount? You are the accountant now. You are still holding, eh? You show an amount of how much? Good. You show an amount of 13. That's what you call the current worth of the business. You show 13. Because as an accountant, remember you value the asset at the end of the year. You show 13. This 3 million will go now to the revolution, Lisa. So now let's go to the taxman. Now, taxman for the assets, they always consider the original cost before any changes. So for the taxman, you will not consider the 13. Now the question was, how much did you buy the value, uh, that land? An amount of how much? 10. But as an account, I showed an amount of how much? So there is a temporary difference of how much? 3,000, which is a gain. What is deferred tax? Liability. Is the amount of tax payable in the future? Now, you know, for tax one, they recognize that any gain should be taxed. Are right, together? There is a gain of how much? Three million. Eh? So they'll take 30 percent of three million, which is an amount of nine hundred. But remember, you're not you have not sold the land. This was not an income. You have just only river. The value. We have said that the value tax is a tax payable in the few. So this 900, you are not paying now. You'll pay in the future when you sell the land to realize this 3 million. 3 million. That's what we call the deferred tax. The amount payable in the future, which arises as a result of taxable temporary what? Difference. Now, what happens? You'll not pay this nine. You'll just be making a provision, like a small provision. You consider how much the balance at the end of last financial year and this financial year, then you consider the change. If it's an increase, so you say that an increase in the part tax provision becomes a what? An expense. If it's a reduction, it becomes a what? Okay. I hope now you understand what do you mean by the part tax? Part tax. Good. Take out your past paper. We'll do some illustration now. November 2019, question 5B. November 2019, question 5B. November 
Open you are there, we are told that. Mafuta Limited had a deferred tax liability as at 1st of October 2018 of 400 million. So now that's the balance at the beginning. For the purposes of preparing the financial statement for the year ended that year of September 2019, the following additional information is available. So I've given that information. Number one, the company has available for sale financial asset with a carrying amount of 80. The company has available for sale financial asset with a carrying amount of 80. Kindly don't copy, I'll give you time to copy. With a carrying amount of 80 and financial asset at fair value through profit and loss of 40 million. Also, there is financial asset at fair value an amount of 40. Yeah, these are what you call the financial instrument as by FRS 9. Available for sale is a long term financial instrument or financial asset. Financial asset at fair value, they are short term. I will read the question again. That the company has available for sale financial asset with a carrying amount. Carrying amount is the amount shown in the financial statement. Eh? And you prepare the financial statement at the end of the year. That means after making all the adjustments. So now this is the accountant after considering all the adjustment. Then you are told that both financial asset had, can you unwind and rain had? That means past, future, or the present tense. Past, good. Both financial assets had reported losses in fair value of 8 million each as at that year of September 2019. Now what we need is the tax base. Carrying amount, this is the accountant. This is the tax man. You already given the carrying amount, what the accountant showed. Eh? Now let's go to the tax man. How much is the tax base? I want individual answers now. How do we interpret that? Eight eight. Uh -huh. Pay. Uh -huh. What are you getting? Sorry? 88 and 48. Uh -huh. What do you get? 88. What about Lillian? Sorry? 72. And? Still digesting, eh? 72. 88, about you, 72, 88, yeah, <laughs> those are the answers. Now, first of all, let's argue, eh? let's read the last statement. Both financial assets had reported losses in fair value of, it had, that means it was before, right? The carrying amount, this is an accountant after making all the adjustment. That means he has already recognized that also. Hey, you see that the taxman is not concerned with the revaluation. He's concerned how much was the original cost. Are you together? So if you had recognized that also of eight, how much was the original cost? Are you together? And this one was an amount of? Good. 80 minus 88, you get? Eight negative, also this one is eight negative. If it's a loss, that's what we call a deductible temporary difference. If it was a gain, that's what becomes a taxable temporary difference. Good, number two, inventory. So number two, we have inventory. Right. How do you measure inventory? That's under IES2, this one here. Under IES2, as an accountant when preparing the financial statement, inventory should be recognized based on the row of the cost or net realizable value. Assuming you are selling this pen and the cost of pen was 50, that was the cost. But based on the market value, they are currently selling, that's what we call the net realizable value, the maximum you can recover. Eh? They are selling at how much? 40. So when determining the value of closing stock, you'll not recognize based on the original cost, based on the row of. So the row of is how much? 
40. So it will take all the number of stock you have that spend, you multiply by 40, the row of. That's how we recognize inventory. That's under IS2. Number two, inventory is shown at the row of cost and net realizable value. The cost is that 200 million, while the net realizable value is that 120 million. Aya, chief accountant, give me the current amount. Good, the row of the two, that one. But the taxman will be concerned. Mm -mm, I just need to know how much was the original cost? Cost was an amount of how much? That two. That 120 minus that 200, you get an amount of it, which is a loss. Eh? Yeah, that loss is what we call now a deductible temporary dip. Difference. Good. Number three, receivables. So we have receivables. Receivables had a carrying amount of 2000. You're already given the carrying amount. Had a carrying amount of 2000. This is an accountant. That means you have made all the adjustment. Receivable had a carrying amount of 200, uh, 2000 million after making an allowance for doubtful debts of 8 million and an exchange gain of. 160 million and realized after making an allowance for debt to debt of 80 at an exchange gain of one. Yeah, for tax purposes, provision for debt to debt is a desirable expense until they are specific. Are right, together? General provision is a desirable until they are what? Specific. But you know that in this case, the 2000, it was after making an allowance for debt to debt of how much? So now what will you do? Yes, that means you had already deducted. Eh? You add back an amount of also, and there was an exchange gain of 160, which is unrealized. I take you back to taxation. All unrealized income are not taxable. You only tax when they are realized. Now, in this case, there was an exchange gain, but you have not received. Eh? So that means if you have made a transaction, you expect a profit. How do you recognize it? As part of receivable, right together. So that means they have added the amount because there is again the expect, but has not been realized. So you do what? You subtract good. You'll get an amount of, is it 1920? I have added the expenses, deducted the income. Good. And what do you get? Get 80. Yeah. Number four. Or you're still loading that. Eh? Yeah, let me give you one minute. You can load that again. Eh? Mm -hmm. So, have you understood? Good. Now, let's go to the other one. Number four. Number four. Trade and other payable. So, now we have trade payable. That's a liability. Trade payable. Kindly don't try it. I'll give you time to try it. Now, trade, pay trade and other payable are stated at 36. So, that's the carrying amount. They are stated at 30. Six after making a provision for discount of 40 million. After making a provision, now all the provision for tax purposes are desirable. All provision are desirable. So now you have shown an amount of that six, but it was after you had made a provision of discount of how much? So, how much was the original amount? That six you add back for? Yeah, you see what gives us to payable? There was some, you made some credit purchases. So you are supposed to pay a given amount, but you expect now a discount of 40. You expect a discount of what you expect to pay this. Eh? So they are deducted, so you add back. So that means the trade payable is an amount of 36. 40. Now note that this is a trade payable, which is the liability. All the liability will be shown as negative. All liability. This minus this one, you get how much? Which is positive, right? 
Now you'll take negative 3600 minus negative 3640. Number five, property plant and equipment, that's PP, has a carrying amount of 48 million and a tax base of four. You are given the carrying amount and the tax base. So how much is the temporary difference? So it's eight, eh? Yeah, it's eight. Then you are told that some rendered building were valued upward by 200 million during the year ended 30th of September 2019. Let's be here. Now, around that building, they are part of PPE. There was a temporary difference of how much? 800. But you do that. Of this 800, 200 was as a result of devaluation. I gave you an NB, NB number two. That devaluation changes for PPE and available for sale has a special deferred tax treat treatment. Good. Number six. Number six intangible assets. Intangible asset consists of trade license being amortized over five years, had a carrying amount of 240 million. So the carrying amount is 240. This was allowed for tax purposes in full two years ago, tax base. Now this is the KRA. This amount was allowed for tax purposes. So how much is the tax base? Zero. 240 minus zero is how much? Yeah, that silence means that you, you haven't understood. Eh? Can you go back to the definition? What is tax base? Let's go to the tax base. And what is tax base? Amount. Good. Amount allowable for tax purposes in the future. The amount allowable for tax purposes in the future. Now let's go back to that statement, number six. Intangible asset consists of trade license being amortized over five years at a carrying amount of 240. This was allowed for tax purposes in full, two years. And you have said that the tax base is the amount which will be allowed for tax purposes in the future. But you know that this amount was allowed for tax purposes in full, two years ago. How much will be allowed in the future? I, I want you to cram this, are you together? That all intangible assets, their tax base is always equal to zero. zero. Good. That one you cram. Uh, give me the total. That will set off. Eh? Eight. You get ten. 1064, eh? Yeah. If you get a positive, that's what you call a net taxable temporary difference. If you get a total, which is negative, becomes a net deductible temporary difference. Now, this is what will happen. Now, we want to determine the deferred tax liability at the end. If it's positive, we are saying that it's deferred, I mean, it's a net taxable temporary difference, which will give rise to deferred tax liability. If it was a negative, it would have given rise to deferred tax assets. Are you together? Good. So you'll take 30% of the net taxable temporary difference. You get three. Three nineteen point. Oh, cool. Note number seven. Assume a tax rate of 30%. Required. Number one. Relevant temporary differences. We have already done that. Number two is the journal entries to record the changes in deferred tax. They are very to record the changes. Is it an increase? Is it a reduction? An increase becomes an expense. A reduction becomes an income. How do you determine that? So you determine that by preparing deferred tax account. And how do you prepare the deferred tax account? So it being a liability, the balance brought down is on the credit side. Balance brought down. Balance carried down. Mm -hmm. So, how much was the balance brought down? Let's go to additional information number one. I mean, the first thing. Mafuta Limited had a deferred tax liability as at 1st of October 2018 of an amount of 400. And then we have the balance carried down 319.2. Then we say that. A devaluation changes for PP and available for sale has a special deferred tax treatment. How do you factor that? 
So in case it's a revaluation gain, you credit. In case it's a revaluation loss, you debit. Revaluation loss. But you're only considering two items. One is the available for sale. So for available for sale, you see it's negative. Eh? Remember both had recognized a loss of eight. So it's eight, which is negative. That means it was a loss. So available for sale, I said that to debit devaluation losses, we take 30%, we multiply by eight, you get 2.4. Also PPE. PPE, how much of the devaluation gain? There's an amount of 200. The temporary difference was eight, but you're told that 200 was the one which was as a result of devaluation of random bit building. So devaluation gain was 200. The debit liberation gain PPE 30 percent of 200 you get an amount of 60. now let's balance this side is more so it's half for 60 for 60. So what do you take now to PNL to the income statement give me the balancing figure. Sorry? 138 point. Now that's the change. Now the question is, is it an income? Is it an expense? Income expense. Uh -huh. Income expense. <laughs> ah, yeah. Let me make your work easy. Eh? Has the deferred tax liability increased or reduced? Has reduced eh? from? <laughs> what did do? Good. Now, this one is a what? Okay, is it an income or an expense? It's an income, correct. You see, the balance brought down was an amount of how much? 400. Then during the year, there was a gain. So that means there was additional deferred tax, an amount of 60. So that was how much? 460. But at the end, how much was the balance? 319. So from 460 to 319, a reduction by 130, a reduction. So you'll take it to the income statement as a what? As an income. Say that reduction in deferred tax liability becomes an income. So what are the journal entries? What do you debit? What do you credit? What do you debit? Profit and loss, you credit? Ah, my question is, we are accounting for this, the journal entries for this one that it. Are you together? Which account have you debited? Okay, which account is this? <laughs> so you credit, uh, you debit deferred tax account, an amount of 138 points. Then you credit. So we're taking it to PNL, eh? You take the income statement of PNL account by the same same amount, one thirty eight point. Oh, good. You can copy now. Our online students are very active. Eh? They are answering all the questions.
Let's do another illustration. November 20, sorry, May 2017, question 4B. May 2017, question 4B. Mumo Limited, Mumo Limited, a manufacturing company, provides for deferred income tax in accordance with IAS 12, income taxes. And the following is an extract from the statement of financial position as at 30th of April 2017. So we are given the extract of the financial statement. Now, we see that the amount shown in the financial statement represents what? The carrying amount could so you already given the carrying amount of all the items. Additional information. The tax base, our basis of the assets are as follows. So we're given the tax base. One is for PPE. And then we have for prepayment. Then we have for interest bearing loan. And then we have financial assets available for sale. So we're given their tax basis. Here we have it's 28, here we have it's 15, here we have it's 17, and then available for sale it's 14. Now give me the occurring amount. Let's go to the balance sheet. How much for PPE? The amount of 14,000. Repayments? Repayments part of current assets. That 200. Interest bearing loans, it's part of non current liability. 16,000. Available for sale, that's part of non current assets. An amount of 12,000. Now let's get the temporary differences. 14 minus 28, you get an amount of, is it 11,200? That you get an amount of 17. Eh? 16, you get an amount of 1,000. And here you get an amount of 2,000, which is what? Negative. Is it okay? Loans, it's, uh, it's negative, eh? Yeah, the teacher is always right, it's positive, eh? <laughs> Loan is a liability, right? What do you say about liability? You show them as a eh? negative, good. Ah, yeah. Can you take minus negative 16 minus negative 17? Do you get positive 1,000? Yes. <laughs> yes, good. Number two, number two. Inventories, now, can you give me the carrying amount of inventories? Let's go to the balance sheet. The carrying amount of inventory was an amount of 75. Good. Number two, you told that. Inventory are stated at fair value, less cost to sell, which is lower than the original cost, which is lower. Huh? So that means this is the lower off. Eh? So that means the tax base will be the higher off. Are you together? Uh -huh. Inventories are stated at fair value, less cost to sell, which is lower than the original cost, due to a general provision for price decline of three points. So how much was the original cost? So just take 75, you add back that in, and you get an amount of 11, so that you get that loss of that in. That was a loss. Eh? So that means the original cost was 11. Now this 75 is what you call the net realizable value. Number three, the intangible assets. Give me the current amount of the intangible assets. Yeah, intangible assets is an amount of 4,000. Give me the tax base. Zero, good. That means you cram correctly. So how much is the temporary difference? 4,000. Yeah, we have said that the temporary, I mean the tax base for the intangible assets is equal to what? Zero. We can still leave that. Eh? The intangible asset comprise development cost, which is tax deductible when the amount is 
paid out. In short, it's a rubber and the amount is paid out. That what we call it's a rubber on cash basis. The cost of intangible asset was paid in year 2014. When are we presenting this financial statement? 2017. But you're told that it's allowable when the amount is paid out. And the amount was paid in 2014? 2014. And you say that the tax base is the amount allowable in the future. If it was allowed in 2014 in full, nothing to allow in the future. So it will be zero. Number four. Goodwill and employee benefits are tax exempt. So therefore, you will not consider them. Trade and other payable. Give me the current amount of trade payable. <clears throat> it's an amount of eight, eight thousand. Good. So now let's read number five. Trade and other. Is it the same? It's eight thousand. Yes. Trade and other payable include. Include. So we had all with this. We want the tax base. Include. We raise. Eh? Trade and other payable include a provision for river allowance of one point four which is tax deductible on the cash basis. Yeah, so you take eight, we do what? We raise an amount of 1.4, you'll get an amount of 66. Uh -huh. How much is the temporary difference? 40. Is it okay? No. Liability. All the liability should be shown as a negative. Now you can confirm whether it's negative now. So it should be negative, eh? Yes, this one is not positive, it's negative. You take negative 8,000 minus negative 6,600, you get negative 14. Number six, trade receivables. So give me the current amount of the trade receivables. The amount of 66? 66, 50, good. Now let's adjust. Trade receivable are stated net. If this is net, that means they have deducted something, right? So automatically do what? You add back good. Trade receivable are stated net of general allowance for bad debt at the rate of 5% of the gross receivable. The general allowance for are not tax deductible until they become what? Specific. Yeah, we see that provision for doubtful debt is a desirable expense until they become specific. specific. Now, can you add the 5% that you give me the tax base? Add the 5%. You're getting an amount of 69? Yeah, that's very wrong. It'll be 7,000, right? How many are <laughs> So the temporary difference will be 350, which is good. Do you agree or you disagree? You disagree, eh? Good. It's good to disagree, eh? So that I explain. Now, let's see the question again. Eh? That's, is it called grammar? <laughs> is it called what? Yeah. Better that trade receivable are stated net. So this means 6650 is net. Eh? They have already deducted something. Eh? Stated net of general allowance for bad debt at the rate of 5% of what? Can you underline gross? <clears throat> you know what you have done? Eh? You have taken 5% of 6650. But you know that 6650 is the net. But it's 5% of the group. So how do you work with that? Now, that means 6650, they have already deducted 5%. So it's equivalent to 95%. Huh? What about 100%? Not unless they, they had said 5% of the net. That's when you could have taken the 5% you add back. But you are told that this is net after deducting 5% of the gross. Good. Number eight, number seven. Number seven. The building, which is included in property, plant, and equipment, was revalued during the year. The increase in value of $3 million does not affect the tax base. Yeah, there was a revaluation of PP, uh, the building, which is part of PPE. Now, let's be here. Now, for PP, there was a temporary difference in amount of 11,200. But you do that. Of this 11,200, 3,000 was a result of what? Devaluation. You know how to deal with this. Eh? This one goes to the deferred tax account. Number eight, the tax base of other items is equal to the occurring amount. 
Mount. How much the temporary difference? Zero. Good. Other asset, the carrying amount and the tax base are the same. That means there is no temporary difference. Now give me the total. Sorry, you get an amount of 10,650. Now let's get the departure tax. You take 30% of 10,650. You get the. Sorry? 95, eh? Good. Required. The deferred tax balance as of 30th of April 2017, 12 marks. Then number two, deferred income tax account. So, how do you prepare the deferred tax account? Add tax account. We we'll have the balance brought down. Here we have the balance carried down. So let's go to the 12 balance for the balance sheet. How much was the deferred tax balance at the beginning? 1,000. Yeah, it's part of non current liability. Then we have the balance carried down, determined as that 195. Then we see that. Revaluation for PP and available for sale, which again you credit. Revaluation gain, you credit, but it's a revaluation loss. You debit. But you only factor two items available for sale and PP. So PP, the temporary difference was taxable, of which the gain was an amount of three. So you take for PP 30% of 3,000, you get an amount of 900. Then we had AFS available for sale. There was a deductible temporary difference. In short, there was a loss. So available for sale, 30 percent of two, you get an amount of 600. This side is more. You get 37.95. That 7.95. That 7.95 minus 21. So how much do you take to PNL? Sorry. 1690. Oh, yeah, this goes to the PNL. So, in case you ask to the journal entries, you're not asked about the journal entries. They wanted the depart tax account. So, what do you debit? What do you credit? We are taking the change. Eh? You have created which account? Depart tax. So, you'll credit the depart tax account with an amount of 1695. You debit. PNL or the income statement. Eh? Yeah, PNL with an amount of 16. So you can copy. And then I want you to try this question right now. Once you're done copying, to August 2022. Question 2B, do it now.
How much is the net temporary difference? Not yet. And the only four items you need to adjust, it should be through by now. What have you managed to interpret? I want you to adopt the culture of doing the assignments eh? because what happens if you just follow what I've been doing here, you assume that everything is very easy. Yes, until you meet with the reality. So, kind of be doing the assignments. You'll train yourself on how to interpret and how to answer the question. I didn't say you stop doing the question. I'll only help where you're stuck. Why are you stuck? That means you're not stuck. Eh? You are not stuck. Why are you stuck? Nah, nah, good. Number three. Ah, yeah. If you are stuck number three, that means you are correct number one. So how much is the temporary difference for number one? Not number one. That's for PPE. Sorry? 250, eh? Ah, yeah. What about the 50, eh? 50? 250, negative, eh? Uh -huh. All of them, the answers. Eh? Number two, number two, it's all about intangible asset. I'm sure you know the tax base is zero, right? How much is the current amount? That's very wrong. Good. Number three, <laughs> it's inventory, right? Inventory, how much is the current amount? A thousand. That's very wrong. What about the tax base? 1500. Also, that one is very wrong. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> very deceivable. How much is the current amount? That's correct. Tax base? For six. That's correct. That's the only thing you have correct. Eh? Ah, now, let's do it. Eh? Number one, so let's read the question. T Limited, a public limited entity is a holding company in a group of companies. So it's a group of company. The foreign transaction related to deferred tax were extracted from, uh, for the purposes of finalizing the group financial statement for the year ended that 1st of April, 2022. Can you align the date? The year ends on 30th of April, 2022. Good. Number one, T Limited owns PPE, so there is PPE. T Limited owns property, plant, and equipment at a cost of 625. Let me assume you know nothing. Eh? PPE, the cost is how much? That's the cost when it was purchased. Depreciation of 250 million has been charged up to the reporting day. As an accountant, you have already charged a depreciation of how much? 200 and Oh, how much is the current amount? 625 minus 250, you get? 375. That's the net book? Value. Good. Then you are told that the entity has claimed a total capital allowance on PPE of? That's the taxman now. Now, the taxman, you will take the cost, which was 620. Taxman will use, uh, will recognize the way and an amount of? 300. So the tax base will be an amount of 325. And how much was the current amount? It's not 375. Mm -hmm. Let's see the last sentence. On 30th of April 2022, that's at the reporting date, the property, plant, and equipment was revalued to 570. 575. Now, as an accountant, the net book value is 375, but the fair value or the market value revaluation is 570. How much will you show in the financial statement? 570 
Good. Give me the departure. I mean temporary difference. 250. Then the net book value of 375, they divided to 575. How much was the revaluation gain? The revaluation gain was an amount of. So that means of these 250 temporary difference, 200 was the result of revaluation. Yes, sure. Good. Two Number two, I'll give you a try. On that 1st October 2021, the company completed a development project and incurred a cost of 200 million, which it capitalizes in accordance with IS 38. Intangible? As, so we have intangible. As, we read that statement again. On that 1st October 2021, and you arrive the date. How many months to end of the year to the reporting date? The year ends on 30th of April 2022. But this one is developed on that 1st of October 2020. So how many months to end of the year? Six. Good. We read that statement again. On that 1st of October 2021, the company completed a development project and incurred a cost of 200 million, which it capitalizes in accordance with IAS that did intangible asset. The estimated economic life of the intangible asset was five years as at that first October 2021. The estimated economic life was five years. So how much was the amortization? If the asset you are given the economic life is five years, the cost was 200, you divide by, you get the amortization per annum. How much is it? 40, but that was as at that first October 2021. Now we are reporting at the end of the year, six months later. So times six over 12, amortization charge to the income statement is an amount of 20. So as an accountant, you take the cost of 200, you raise amortization of 20, you get an amount of 180. How much is the tax base? Yeah, the tax base for intangible asset is zero. You get an amount of 180. Good. Ah, yeah. Number three. During the year to that year of April 2022, T limited transferred good. If you transferred good, this is a, is a group of companies. So you want to determine the amount of inventory. And how do you account for intergroup sales or unrealized profits? Do you remember that? Eh? This is a group of companies. If the parent sells subsidiary or subsidiary sells to the company, there is that element of unrealized profit, right? We added to the cost of sales, you eliminate from the closing stock. All right, together. For unrealized profit, you added to the cost of sales, you raise from the closing stock. Who does that? Is it the taxman or the accountant? Account you are the one preparing the consolidated financial statement. Let me take you back to the tax. For tax purposes, the taxman does not recognize the group aspect of taxation. He assesses each company separately for tax purposes. Yeah, Kerry, I thought you could be a group of company. No. Mm -hmm. Remember, a company is a person. In the eyes of, you assess each company separately. It's only an account that knows that this is a group of company we need to consolidate. Now, let's read number three. During the year to that year of April 2022, T Limited transferred good worth 1,500 million to one of its subsidiary. That's what you call intergroup sales. T Limited made a gross profit margin of 20% on its. Say one that of the goods remained unsold. One that now that remained unsold is what you call the closing stock, closing stock by the subsidiary on the reporting day. Ah, let's go to the tax man now. The, in this case, we are evaluating the closing stock. We transferred good worth how much? How much is remaining in the stock? That so tax man will take an amount of how much? Now let's go to an accountant. An accountant, 1,500, one over three, you determine the closing stock, closing stock, but you eliminate the unrealized profit. They had made a profit of how much? 20. So you want to recognize 80 per? And you get 80%, that's 400, right? I repeat again. I've taken the intergroup sales, you take that to determine the goods remaining in the stock because we are evaluating the current asset that's the inventory. But that transaction of 500, they had already made a profit of 20. Are you together? So 
So the question is, how much was the cost? You don't recognize closing stock at their selling price. You recognize them at cost. That's what they want. That's why they have eliminated the 20% of the profit they have made to get the cost. Is it 400? Yes. Give me the temporary difference. 100, which is? Negative. Ah, yeah, number four. At least you're able to interpret that one correctly. Receivables. Trade receivable were carried in the consolidated statement of financial position at 480 were carried. That's the carrying amount. This was after an allowance for debt debts of 60 million and unrealized foreign exchange gain of 80. So how much was the tax base? So it's 480. First of all, you add back provision for debt to debt an amount of 60. Also, there was unrealized gain, an amount of 80. That one you eliminate, it's an income. You get an amount of 160. 480 minus 460, you get an amount of 20. Number five, the balance of the deferred tax liability of T group as at 1st of May 2021 was 25. The income tax rate applicable to T for the year and that year of April 2022 was that. Give me the total. You get three, three ten. Required. <clears throat> Compute the relevant temporary differences as of that year of April 2022. We've done that. Then deferred tax account. So deferred tax account. Balance brought down. Note number five was an amount of 25. Then we have the balance carried down 105. Then you factor any valuation changes for PP and available for sale. The only thing we had was PPE. How much was liberation as a result of PPE? So, liberation gain for PPE, you take 30% of 200, you get an amount of 60. So, this is 105. 105. So, how much do you take to PNL? 105 minus 85, you get 20. Yeah? Good. That will get like 10 months. So now you can copy.
Now let's look at methods of determining income taxes. Okay, before we go to that, now let's look at argument, argument for recognizing deferred tax. Argument for recognizing deferred tax. Argument for recognizing deferred tax. Yeah, why should the company take into account the deferred tax when determining the tax expense? Yeah, because most of the SMEs does not they, they do not recognize deferred tax. Eh? Yeah, what are the essence of the what are the argument or the importance or the advantages of recognizing deferred tax? Number one, number one, number one, the accrual basis and matching concept of accounting. The accrual basis, the accrual basis of accounting and the matching concept, the accrual basis of accounting and matching concept requires revenues stroke incomes requires revenues requires revenue stroke income to be matched to be matched with their taxes to be matched with their taxes to be matched with their taxes and that's one of the argument why should we recognize the third tax number two number two Number two, another argument why should be cognizant deferred tax. Let me say that deferred tax, deferred tax will eventually become actual tax. Deferred tax will eventually become actual tax. Will eventually become actual tax. You see what we have said that in this case, when the cognizant deferred tax, you're only considering the changes. In short, you're making a provi a provision. So, for example, assuming that. The illustration we had done where there was a liberation gain of 3 million. Then you take 30%. That means you're supposed to pay tax on how much? 900. But during the year, you didn't pay 900. You considered the change, that movement. Assume the change, you paid an amount of 300. What if now it happened that after three years, now the company will sell the building or the land? And in this case, the actual deferred tax or the actual tax now will be 900. So that means you need to pay 900, but you have to be making a provision. You have been making a provision. You are making some small, small payments. So in that case, you'll say that year one, I had made a provision of which I had already paid 300. Year two, for example, I paid 200. So when it become actual tax, you'll only pay the difference. So that's the other essence, because one day, deferred tax will become the actual tax. So it will be required to pay the ransom amount. But you have been making a provision, that means you'll only pay the difference. Number three, number three, Another argument, if deferred tax is ignored, if deferred tax is ignored, if deferred tax is ignored, comma, profit will be inflated. Profits will be inflated stroke overstated. Profit will be inflated stroke overstated, which will have the following implications which will have the following implication, which will have the following implication. Now, assume this, I don't write it. Eh? Assume the current tax for the year was 300 million. Then the changes in deferred tax was an amount of 50. That means you're supposed to pay an amount of 350. Now let's ignore the deferred tax. If you ignore the deferred tax, how much will you pay? You only pay 300. What will happen to this 50? Now, instead of, in, uh, instead of now uh, deducting 350, you have deducted only 300. So that means this cost saving of 50 will lead to increment of pro profit. So in short, your profit will be inflated by how much? 50. What are the implications of inflating the profit? Number one, one of the implications, I say that which will have the following implication. Roman one, overpayment of dividends. Number one is overpayment of dividends. Number two, number two, distortion of EPS, distortion of EPS. And that means the company and the IS that they, they recognize are wrong EPS. If you recognize EPS, those are key, uh, key ratios that most of the investor look when determining and when making financial decisions. Dividend per share and earnings per share. Now they'll make a decision based on wrong EPS. So that means what? Number three, other implication, shareholders stroke investors will be misled. 
investors, shareholders will be misread, will be misread. Good, yeah, those are the, some of the argument why we need to recognize the partners is to avoid those scenarios. Now let's look at methods of determining, methods of determining income tax, methods of determining income tax, methods of determining income tax. I to see that there are two major methods. 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 So let me explain. Don't try it. Let me just explain. Number one, we have what we call the nil provision. Nil provision method. All tax payable. Method. Nil provision or tax payable method or fraud rule. Method. And then number two, we have deferred tax accounting method. Deferred tax accounting method, also known as triability method. What's the difference between the two? Now, as a new provision method, this recognizes only the current tax, therefore ignoring deferred tax. So IS 12 does not recommend the use of this method because this only recognizes the current tax. Therefore, ignoring the part tax. But on a deferred tax accounting method, it recognizes both the current tax and the deferred tax. Then, how do you determine the deferred tax element using the uh, using this method? We have two other methods. Uh, we have two methods you can use to determine the deferred tax element. One is the full provision method where you consider all the temporary differences for the transaction. And then you also have what we call the partial provision method. We already recognize the transaction, which are reasonable of reversing in the future. Number one, let's start with A. A, nil provision stroke tax payable stroke flow through method. Let you see that. This method, this method only recognizes the current tax. But this method only recognizes the current tax, therefore ignoring deferred tax, therefore ignoring deferred tax, therefore ignoring deferred tax. Full stop. IAS 12, IAS 12, mm -hmm. IAS 12 does not recommend, IAS 12 does not recommend the use of this method. IAS 12 does not recommend the use of this method. Number B, number B, number B. Deferred tax accounting method, deferred tax accounting method, stroke liability method, stroke liability method. Let me see that. This method, this method recognizes both, this method recognizes both the current tax, recognizes both the current tax and deferred tax, recognizes both the current tax and the deferred tax, the current tax and the deferred tax, full stop. Then you write to see that. Deferred tax element, deferred tax element, deferred tax element, deferred tax element can be determined, deferred tax element can be determined using the following two methods, can be determined using the following two methods using the following two methods. Roman one, full provision method, full provision method, full provision method. Let me see that. Under this method, 
under this method, comma, under this method, comma. Mm -hmm. All the temporary differences for all the transactions under this method, comma, all the temporary differences for all the transactions, all the temporary differences for all the transactions are considered all temporary differences for all the transactions are considered full stop. This is the recommended method by IES 12. This is the recommended method. This is the recommended method by IES 12. This is the recommended method by IES 12. Yeah. Roman two, another method, partial provision method, partial provision method. Partial provision method. All right, we see that. Under this method, comma, under this method, comma, only temporary differences, only temporary differences, only temporary differences for those transactions which are reasonable. And at this method, only the temporary difference for those transactions which are reasonable of reversing in the future, which are reasonable of reversing in the future, of reversing in the future are recognized. Reasonable of reversing in the future are recognized. Good. And that marks the end of that a topic. Eh? income taxes. So we can call it a day. So our next topic will be impairment of assets, that's under IS that six.